back from Hartford. Opening day of a new session here on Meet the Leaders. Hi there, I'm David Smith, and we've got Representative Dennis Clarence visiting with us, and she represents the 114th District, Woodbridge, Orange, and Derby. Dennis, good to see you always. Thank you. Thank you. Here we are. You know, this is a day where, where people have been running around smiling for opening day. Opening day usually brings some smiles. However, those smiles often turn upside down mm -hmm shortly thereafter. How do you see things as you're taking I a look I always at say it? this is probably the happiest day we'll have yeah, all session. Exactly. Well, I mean, everybody's, I mean, this is a happy day. We're excited to start a new session. People are newly elected, yeah. you know, and we have hope, more importantly. We have hope that we'll work whatever problems we have out and we'll do it in as bipartisan a way as possible. And, you know, we start out feeling that way and, you know, it goes the way it goes. There's a lot of pomp and circumstances goes on. And, uh, and then the, the governor, of course, gave his state of the state message. And uh, it was a positive, but certainly overridden by the realities of Newtown, mm -hmm. uh, the situation that now we're d left with trying to do something about the gun situation uh, in the state of Connecticut, as well as, of course, the budget going forward. How do you see things happening between, you know, cross party lines and so forth? What what expectations have you as far as getting anything done regarding assault weapons in particular? That seems to be the, the real focus. Well, you know, we, we just came off a special session in December and we, you know, we're very proud to have worked in a bipartisan manner and, and come to an agreement that everybody could live with. And, and that's how we always start out, whether it's the budget or the gun situation or whatever bills we take up. You know, but as far as the, the gun problem goes, there's already been proposals submitted. There'll be more proposals submitted and we'll have many public hearings and people coming up speaking for and against. And hopefully, I mean, my hope is we come up with a solution that actually improves whatever the problem we perceive to be is, not just something that looks good on paper mm -hmm. and makes people feel good, but doesn't actually change anything. Well, one of the aspects involved here is that, unfortunately, with the Sandy Hook situation, the world is looking at, at Connecticut mm -hmm. very closely these days. They are going to be watching what the legislature and, and the governor do in regard to this because it has become the focal point of this whole problem that really is not just a, a Connecticut problem or U.S. problem. There are other parts of the world also that are dealing with this. Well, what a lot of people don't understand though is federally, you know, as far as the assault weapon ban goes, we don't, you know, it was sunsetted nationally, but we have one in Connecticut, you know, and we have had one for recent years, and we have some of the strictest gun laws in the country on the books. I'm not saying we shouldn't be changing them, and there are certainly some things I think we should be changing and modifying, but you know, I think we've done a very good job in recent years of maintaining and allowing people their Second Amendment rights while keeping people safe. Now, clearly, tragedies occur, and that's a terrible thing, but we can't control every single thing that happens. All we can do is try and anticipate what might happen, and when things happen, figure out, well, what could we have prevented, if anything? But, but your point is well taken. We've got strict gun laws, and yet things like this happen mm -hmm. in states with strict gun laws. Right. Clearly, it has to have a, a national umbrella to it yes. in order to really handle things, as the governor suggested. You can get a gun down in Florida, bring it up to Connecticut, and conduct whatever you want to, basically. And I mean, I always use this example with my friends after, after this happened. I said, let's just make the most extreme example we can, that we ban all guns, period. Okay, let's just, which obviously wouldn't happen, wouldn't but let's just happened. say the most extreme thing possible. People will still be having guns tomorrow, and bad things can happen. Mm -hmm. So it's just like drugs. I mean, they're, bad drugs are illegal. People get them within 15 minutes. So, you know, and like I said, I'm very clear about saying, I'm not saying we don't need to modify things or change things, but we have to remember that banning it does it make people not get them? And they get them all the time now. I always say the drug dealers on the streets that are buying 50 guns for their, you know, their group of, of fellow drug dealers, they don't have pistol permits. You know, they're not buying them legally in a gun store. I mean, they're getting them somewhere and people are going to get them one way or the other. All we can do is anticipate and do what we think is the most um, efficient way to make people safe. 
Well, it, it, it really appears that it's going to be a national program that's going to be necessary in order to make a real dent in things. Uh, Australia did it back in 1993, and it has been unbelievably successful, uh, but on a national or countrywide basis. Right. And that seems to be what's eventually going to have to happen here, hopefully sooner rather than later. But that happens with a lot of our laws, you know, whether it was the medical marijuana or, you know, many laws that we have. Like, we can make things legal, but if they're federally illegal, yeah. then it doesn't do us any good. Yeah. The budget. And I know this is, uh, this is something that you have great concern, and understandably we all should, uh, about as we're facing up to 1.2 by the end of the year. Where do we go? What what cuts do you see being made? Because it, the governor focused on cuts or or adjustments or call it what you will, rather than taxes. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, clearly that's the direction we'd like to see him go in. I mean, I can't give you a specific cut now because the the problem is when you do a budget, you know, it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of lines, you know, and you literally go through each one of those hundreds of lines and say, okay, a hundred thousand off here, you know, two hundred thousand off there, and that takes a long time, but. I mean, we had the highest tax increase in the state of Connecticut's history two years ago, you know, and that was supposed to have solved the problem. And you know, a lot of us didn't believe that was the solution. And here we go with a, you know, looking towards a multi-billion-dollar deficit for the next two years already. You know, a number of your colleagues that we've talked to have suggested uh, maybe we've got to reopen the negotiations with the unions. Absolutely. I mean, when you listen, the union. The amount of money that goes into all the union issues, okay, the union monetary issues, that's the biggest part of our budget, okay? And when you tied our hands, meaning the legislature's hands, as to how we're going to fix a budget deficit, I mean, that, that limits us drastically, you know? And so, I mean, the governor made, negotiated that. He felt that was the best deal at the time. But clearly, you know, you can't tie people's hands for four years that way. Because how are we supposed to do our job when the biggest amount of that budget is basically said, okay, we're going to put that in a closet for the next four years. You can't look at that. You can't touch that. You can't take anything from it. You know, it's not, it's not a reasonable way to do business. Are there ways to bring them back to the table? Well, I mean, it's my understanding that they have to want to come back to the table. Well, it is going to be an interesting session. There's no question about it. And I'm glad there were smiles to start it off. And hopefully we'll be able to have some smiles along the way. Yes, but me it's too. always a pleasure me to catch too. up with you. Thanks Thank so you much so for much. Your help. Dennis Claret is our, our visitor on, uh, on this edition and uh, back for another edition of uh, Meet the Leaders from this opening day of a new session in Hartford. That's all the time we've got for you on Meet the Leaders this go-around. I'm David Smith, but we'll look for you next time.